Oh, uh, welcome back to another self-powering diesel heater project project test. So, I have done away with the wait this the air, air box. We've got an air box. It's the radiator induction, not induction, forced cooling. It would be the induction side of the heater where we draw the air in over the radiators and then back out at the heater and the coolant flows around the radiators and back out round through the tags etc etc cooling them via the air intake of the heater for this test I have been to B&Q which for my American friends is I know almost like your Lowe's where you go and get screws, nuts, bolts, plumbing etc etc supplies and I have bought a large panel radiator why did I buy this one in particular? Two reasons. It's the biggest one I could carry. So this radiator empty, uh, just as a radiator, is like 57 kilograms in way of steel. It is heavy. And it's even heavier now that it's full of water and I'm slightly concerned of it falling over on top of me at some point. But I shall persevere. Now this radiator is rated, where is the things? for a uh, uh, 50 degree change in temperature out output is rated at 2.8 kilowatts and a change in temperature of 30 degrees is rated at 1500 watts 2.8 kilowatts 1.5 kilowatts so that should be about what the tags were doing but I don't know how well I've got it plumbed in I don't really know what I'm doing with plumbing but I've got the hot water coming off the tags and then going through the radiator and then back in a header tank and we're just out to one pump now. So we've got one pump. What I'll do is fire it up, get it running, keep this running, turn on the Doogee phone with the thermal imaging and we'll look at the radiator and see what it's doing and seeing what sorts of outputs we're getting. So I want current on you, that's the current output from the tags. I've got my multimeter back so I can see the battery and tag voltage. Where are the ends of those probes? So currently we have DC voltage. The battery is at 12.53 volts because it's sitting there doing nothing and the tags are doing nothing as they're supposed to do. So let us fire up. Fire up. Go. Fire up. Pumps on. And the diesel heat, you're starting to diesel heat. I'll bring you back once we are up and running. Right, let me bring you in while it's firing up. So on the thermocouple sensor tester thing here, okay, that's the hot side obviously, and that's the cold side, which is the temperature of the water block and the coolant. So that's the cold side of the tag. That's the hot side. Everything's firing up at the moment. There is no current flow at the moment because the voltage across the tags is not high enough yet. The voltage across the tags. Oh, I nearly, nearly managed that one-handed there. Nearly. Right, go. Oh. Can I do it one-handed? Come on, come on. Yes. So voltage across the tags at the moment is 12 volts, so we need more than that. It'll start to come up now, that's the diesel heater lit, fully lit, so the temperature start to climb away up now. Hopefully. Go. 90. Uh, voltage, 12.24 from the tags. Current, nothing so far. There we go, we're starting to get current flow now. Voltage slowly climbing. 600, 700, 800. One amp. What? 150 degrees nearly on the hot side and 13 on the cold side. I have no idea what the thermal imaging is doing behind me, but it's hopefully recording something. Right, I don't have enough hands to do all this right. That's us cross two amps. I'm going to put the camera in its tripod and come back.
Right, so on the thermal imaging, it looks like we're starting to get heat in the radiator, at least a little bit. It's starting to creep along the bottom. Not a lot, but a little. Dun, 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 dun. Let's zoom in. So we've got 3.7 amps output from the tags, which is probably because that's all the heater's consuming at the moment. Oh, it's still climbing. Uh, temperature has just gone past 200 odd degrees. You can just see that. And there, there goes 4 amps, or is that, it's about to cross 4 amps. Come on, don't make me a liar. Right, there's four amps, so we're now four plus. So the heater's not pulling four amps. The heater's pulling less than four amps, so we're now charging the battery with that uh, current output. I mean, it's not charging a lot, but hopefully it'll keep going up. Where's, 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 where's battery voltage? There's 4.1 amps. So tag voltage, tag voltage output, sorry, is 13.39 volts, so 13.4 volts, and the battery voltage is 12.8, well it's 12.8 at the Genesun, I don't know what it is at the actual batteries, because obviously the output from the tags is going through, through to the heater as well as through to the battery to charge it. 4.2 amps, so let us reset the current meter for the diesel here. DC zero, and put that round there. So it's consuming, well, say 4 amps, and the tags are outputting 4.2 amps, so 300 odd milliamps at the moment is going into charging the battery. How's my radiator looking? Well, I can see warmth in it. It's, there's, uh, it's definitely doing something. It's radiating, at least. The hot side of the tags isn't as hot as I thought it was going to be. What have we got there? 224 degrees and 27 degrees on the cold side. But the current output's still going up. Still climbing. To be fair, the battery's probably just getting trickle charged at the moment from the Genesun. Because although it was flat, it wasn't like flat, flat. So, let me zoom out a bit. Battery voltage is. 12.87, oh that's it, and then the tags are 13.47. Now have I got enough wire? No, nope. nearly. I was hoping I could actually stab this in the battery. Right, um, it's probably going to be the wrong polarity, but here we are. The battery voltage, 12.55 volts. So it's charging at the moment. Tag output, 4.3 amps. And you can't see the other one because it's now out with the display. Ah, oh, it's moved. Right, hold on. Is that, is that better? Yes. So there's your two in and out. 4.3 out the th out the heater and basically four in. So we've got a surplus of 300 milliamps at the moment. So the heater's essentially running for nothing. Not running for nothing, you know what I mean? It's not consuming any power. And it can still go hotter. Nice, okay. Right. Let's zoom out a bit. Zoom out that collection of meters. And let's go see what the thermal's still doing. It's me, it needs to walk across the room. Yep, but still, radiator is radiating at least. I'll give it that. Okay, so that was that, was that experiment. Uh, right, I'll shut it down and shut you down and bring you back once it's gone into silence. So the purpose of the giant radiator in this experiment 
was to see if we could do passive cooling. I'm not for one moment suggesting that you go out and put a 60 kilo, 60 kilo radiator in a camper van or anything like that. That's, that's ridiculous. But what it, that could be, that could be underfloor heating. You could have a loop of underfloor heating in your van to dissipate the heat from the tags so you're still not wasting any heat. You know, you're actually dissipating the heat in your van but you're doing it passively. The other part of the test was to see if we could do the whole thing with just one pump. So we're now just down to one 400 odd milliamp pump, which is what we're seeing in the now output from the tags is we've now gained that 400 odd milliamps back. So we're charging with that, which is nice. We have done the thing. We are now producing more power than we are consuming. And we're not finished yet. This is, we're not finished with this heater in particular. Because we want to try and now get, uh, with help from some of our friends on the Facebook page, we're going to try and model up a heat exchanger. I can't show you because I've sent it away, but model up the heat exchanger so we can maybe uh, like model one up and then 3D print it with already the flat spots in place for tags, and then we could print that and then make a cast and then mould our own heat exchanger so we've got actually the flat bits already on it, ready to put tags on, and hopefully that'll let us build a better thing and something, I don't know, need a bit of designing and thinking and thought from the other Davids and uh, other Mike, the Michael who's doing a, the designing of the heat exchanger bit so we can fiddle with that and yeah, it's, uh, it's good and I might have a bigger heater coming that we can test with to get see if it actually does more output but I'm not, I'm not, not sold if it will or not but I'm hoping it does, I'm hoping it'll put more output and we'll get more heat, which means we can add more tags, which means you can get more power out of it. But that's us for this. Oh no, that was that was the other point was to see if this was having any effect on like is this being obstructive to the airflow? Like is this increasing our current consumption? Because with this on, obviously you have to draw the air through the whole thing, and that makes the fan work harder to do a thing. But that doesn't appear to be a thing. This seems to be fairly, fairly well free flowing. But there's still some options of maybe building a better, more efficient, larger radiator version of this to cool, force cool the incoming air. And maybe still just use the one pump, because one pump seems to be managing all of that gubbins, and then my horrible silicon hoses, a full size radiator, and back to a header tank, and then back at the header tank and at the pump. And that little teeny tender pump is doing absolutely no problem, it is quite happy in doing its thing. Any questions, comments, and that, leave them down below. I'll try and answer them, or hopefully somebody else will answer them. There's also the Facebook page. I'll leave a link to that for our diesel shenanigans, uh, diesel here shenanigans, so we say. And I think that's, that's about it. And as always, thanks for watching.